Every worship song you play this Sunday is going to be in one of 12 major keys. And I know some of you are like, well, there's minor keys and there's modes and all. just to simplify it, we're just going to say every one of your songs is in one of 12 major keys. And now when I say key, I just mean a group of seven chords. And in your key, you're really only playing four of those chords, the one position, the four, the five, and the six. That's three major chords and one minor. So we need to get really, really good at these four positions if we wanna play modern worship music. So let me show you how this is gonna work. We're gonna focus our attention on three keys, the key of G major, the key of C major, and the key of E major. There are voicings, there are chords and things we can do in these three keys uh, that we can't do in the others. And beyond that, they're spaced apart from each other enough that when we use our capo, we cover all 12 keys that we could possibly play in on Sunday. So for the key of G, we're gonna cover five different keys. Uh, in the key of C, we're not only gonna cover the key of C, but we're gonna use our capo to cover D flat and D and E flat. So we have four keys we're gonna cover with that. And then the key of E is gonna cover those remaining keys. The key of E, the key of F, and the key of G flat. So all the chords I'm gonna show you apply to both electric and acoustic guitar, but I'm using electric today because as many of you know, electric is a totally different animal than acoustic. I think it's often harder to use certain chord voicings on electric with you know, heavier, crunchier tone than it is on acoustic. So I wanna show you today, especially how these sound on electric guitar. So if you apply these principles today, I'm so excited and I hope you are too because you're about to make your job a lot easier. So let me show you the four chords we're gonna learn in the key of G. I love the key of G. There's so many great things we can do with this key. Your songs on Sunday are gonna be in one of 12 keys and the key of G is gonna cover for us five of those keys. So of course we're gonna play in the key of G and we're gonna use our capo then on fret one, two, three, and four to play an A flat, to play an A, to play an B flat, and to play an B. So five keys out of the 12 we're gonna cover by just learning these four chords in the key of G. 90 to 95% of the time, if you're in the key of G, you're playing the G major in the one position, the C major in the four, the D major in the five, and the E minor in the six. Some of you who've been playing forever, you already know this. You know these chords go together and you're used to playing these together. So with each key, we're gonna have an anchor position. An anchor position means that we're gonna have our fingers playing certain notes throughout all four chords and sometimes throughout the entire song. And in the key of G, we're gonna put our third and fourth finger down here on the third fret. And our anchor position is gonna be these bottom three strings. So we're gonna play these the entire time and we're only gonna move the notes on the top three strings of the guitar. So in the key of G, we have our G major, C major, D major, E minor, and it looks like this. That's my G chord. Here's my C. Here's my D. Here's my E minor. Now, let me walk you through these. In the G chord, uh, some of you who've played these before, you're used to playing maybe a G like this, or like this, or maybe like this. Um, when I play electric guitar, I don't like putting competing bass notes together right here. If it's a fifth, like a power chord, cool, but not when it's a third like this. The heavier my tone gets, the more muddy it sounds. So I'm actually leaning my first finger over to mute for the A string underneath. Okay, so let me go down each note. Okay, and the principle is the same for a four chord, the C. I'm just gonna move this finger here to the C note. Okay, I'm gonna lean it over just like before and mute this string underneath it. Okay, and I'm, I have my thumb up here to mute the E on the top. The top three strings are just And the bottom three are still. So it sounds like this. Okay, so let's listen to both of those together. G, 
see. Let's keep going. Here's the D major that we're gonna play. And you'll notice the name of these chords has fancy susses and numbers attached to it. I'm gonna explain that in the advanced section at the end if you wanna know more about the chord theory behind all these. But for now, I'm just gonna keep calling them by their simple name. So on our D major, I'm using my thumb again to mute up here. And then I'm playing my A note underneath it. Now by itself, it sounds kind of weird. It's designed to fit into the key of G and sound more key of G-ish. And the same thing for this E minor. I know many of you are used to playing an E minor like this. But modern worship is, for the most part, very often is gonna make their minors minor sevenths. The seventh adds sort of like a softening to the chord. So instead of the really dark, that seventh is gonna give it a little bit more of a modern feel uh, where when we don't want that super dark tone. So all four of them together again, here's our G. C. D. E minor. Now I wanna give you a chance to try these out. Before we do that, I wanna point something out. Uh, many of you are playing electric guitar, uh, but you're also an acoustic guitar player. And you know that playing an acoustic guitar, their strings are heavier, so we're pushing harder. But when we play electric, we need to make sure that our, our touch is light and our fingers are right down on the fingertips. If we press too hard on our notes, uh, the notes will get sour and they'll sound like they're out of tune. In many of you, your chords sound rough. And it's not because the intonation of your guitar is bad. It's not because your strings are even out of tune. It's because you're pressing too hard on your guitar. I can't tell you how many times I've met with guitarists and just that simple little trick, just loosen your notes up a bit, almost to the point where it starts buzzing because you're not pressing hard enough. And learn how to get a lighter touch on these chords. And I guarantee you, many of you are gonna notice that these chords, I think, are gonna sound more like they're more in tune. The key of C is a fabulous key. I'm gonna say this about every one of these keys, but I love the key of C. There's so many great things we can do here. And just like the key of G, there are a couple different ways I play, but I wanna show you uh, how we can play all four of these chords in the key of C, the C major, the F major, the G major, and the A minor how we can play all of these using an anchor position. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our first finger up here on our B string on the first fret. And we're gonna keep the two notes around it open. Technically that's a C major chord. Just those three open. And then we're gonna do make all of our changes down here. Okay, so our C major is gonna look like this. Uh, traditionally, I know many of you learned your C chord maybe like this. But what we're going to do is we're going to play this inversion or we're going to put this G bass note on the top here. And you'll see why this is going to be convenient for us in a minute. But I also like it because I don't have to mute the top string and it gives me a bigger sound. Uh, On to our F major. All we're going to do with our F major is we're going to pull this finger off and we're going to move these two down here. Okay, and I'm gonna bring my thumb up, and we have a couple options here with this. Uh, we can mute this top string, or if you can reach it, we could play it up here. Um, I'll show you a variation on this chord at the end. But for now, I'd say just mute it, and here's what your F would sound like. Again, I, I know by itself, it probably doesn't sound like a normal chord, but remember, these chords are designed to fit in the key they're in based on the position they're in. It matters whether your major chord is in the one or the four or the five position. Each of those positions have a different role in your song, so they're colored very differently, meaning that if you have a bunch of tricks that you really like and sound really good on your, say, your one chord on the key of C, that may not work when you go to the key of F, and I can guarantee it probably won't work when you go to the e key of F and you try those out when the C is in the five position. But that's theory stuff, we'll deal with that later. So for our C, here's our F. Our G, I'm just coming up 
and I'm playing this with my third finger, this G note, and I'm leaning it over just like in the key of G to mute this note underneath it. And I'm keeping this E open on the bottom. And then for the A minor, I'm just putting this finger here, just like we had it on our C chord. So I'm just opening that up and I'm muting with my thumb right here and I'm playing this. So just like the key of G, watch if I move between all four of these, watch how little my hand moves. Ninety percent or more of your song you could play just from these shapes, just by barely moving your hand. So take a minute, uh, have fun with these, and uh, we'll come back and talk about the key of E. Well, welcome back. I'm sure by now you've mastered the key of G and the key of C. Uh, now remember, before we move on, we want to make sure we're not pressing too hard and try to keep your fingers, uh, try to get to the fingertips as much as you can. One more tip beyond this, uh, it is so much easier to play a note when you're up at the top of the fret up here. If you find yourself wandering back to the back of the fret right back here, it gets so much harder to play. So do what you can to get all of your fingers up as high as you can on the fret uh, right before that bar. Uh, it's going to sound a lot better. All right, so here's the key of E. Uh, we have in our one position, the E major, our four position, the A major, our five is the B major, and our six is the C sharp minor. Now, the key of E is so much fun because we have open strings to work with. The E and the A are both part of the key, and then the E and the B on the bottom, of course, are part of the key. So we can get some massive big sounds. And I honestly, I, I debated what voicings to show you in the key of E because there are quite a few we could use here. But I wanted to stay with the anchor position concept. And some of you who've never played in the key of E, who've never played power chords before um, or bar chords, you may find some of these positions a little foreign. Uh, but I guarantee you, if you just let your hand get used to them, they're gonna become like second nature. Just like the previous two keys, the key of E, we have an anchor position. Our fourth finger is right here on our G string on the fourth fret, okay? And then we're gonna leave the bottom two open the whole time. So the whole time, if we never played the top three strings, this is all we'd hear the entire time. This is the E chord that I'm gonna show you. And remember, at the end in the advanced section, I'm gonna show you alternatives to all three of these keys, some other chord options. And I know some of you who already know the key of E, you're gonna be like, man, you're not playing my favorite chords. I know, I know, there's so many great options here. Um, and yes, those key of D people, we're gonna talk about that at the end too. I know some of you out there are squirming. All right, so the E major uh, looks like this. Okay. And I, for this one, I'm going to flatten my finger here. I'm going to flatten this. Some of you I know physically can't flatten your finger. Uh, either way, it's going to sound good, but I'll flatten it and it'll sound like this. Okay. The A major, what I'm going to do is come up here and my middle finger is going to come over and mute my top E string. Okay. I'll pull my third finger out of there so you can see what I'm doing. So that it should sound like this. The B major. This is, those of you who are used to doing power chords, you're familiar with this shape. So same thing, our middle finger is gonna come up and mute our E, we don't want that played. So lightly touching it, okay? And then I'm gonna play that for our B chord. And right from this B position, we're, all, we're gonna stay in this shape. And we're just gonna move our third finger here, up to here. And then this finger on the top, we're gonna move back down here, okay? So that's our C-sharp minor, okay? So that was our B. We're just gonna switch the position of these two fingers. Okay, so all those together, E major, A major, B major, and C-sharp minor. But let me give you a trick here when you're playing chords like this. I know some of you are like, dude, you're killing me, man. This, this is really difficult to play. You can feel it in your wrist. But let's do this. Uh, just take your hand, your left hand, and put it in front of you and have your palm facing you like this, okay? And then what you're going to do is just bend your hand at the wrist towards you like this, okay? 
and put your thumb underneath like a sock puppet, okay? And just do that. And then keep that shape of your hand and then we're gonna do that up here on our guitar. Now at the back of my guitar, you'll see I have my thumb in the back here. That's how I'm playing most of these chords is I'm making sure you're gonna feel the stretch right back here on your wrist. And for everyone, it's gonna be a little different uh, depending on your hand shape and experience and all of that. If you're in a place where you're absolutely like, I just can't play it, I can't do it, then hang with us because at the end I'm going to show you an alternative and uh, a totally different way to play these chords. Well, I told you in the beginning this was going to be fast and that was a lightning fast crash course in uh, what I think are the, some of the 12 most important chords that you could know for modern worship music. So let's recap. I can't stress enough make sure you pay attention to the muted notes just as much as the ones that you're playing. I know some of you want to cheat and you want to ignore those muted notes, uh, but don't do that. We don't want those unwanted notes ringing out. It's just going to muddy the chord, if not make it sound awful. And again, make sure, make sure you're not pressing too hard, especially if you, you have electric guitar. If you press too hard, your chords are gonna sound sour and it's gonna sound like your guitar is out of tune. And if your guitar already has bad intonation or if your strings are old, it's gonna make things even worse. Now, from this point on, our goal is to stop learning random chords and we need to start learning chord families, chords that sound like they fit together, they look like they fit together, they're in the same space on the guitar, and they sound like modern worship music. And here's the weird dynamic. You would think when you start adding susses and numbers and complexity to a chord that you're just making things way harder. And I know there are many guitarists out there who see those susses and they just assume they assume that it's gonna make their job harder. But this is not the case with modern worship music. And how exciting is that? If you learn these chords, it's gonna make things so much easier. And here's what really excites me too. These chords are so easy, and this process is so simple that I believe that you're gonna learn these in no time, and you're gonna be able to turn around and teach someone else on your worship team how to do these. By learning just three keys, we're gonna use our capo, and it's gonna put us in all those other keys. So for the key of G, we're gonna cover five different keys. Uh, in the key of C, we're not only gonna cover the key of C, but we're gonna use our capo to cover D flat and D and E flat. So we have four keys we're gonna cover with that. And then the key of E is gonna cover those remaining keys, the key of E, the key of F, and the key of G flat. Now, I would love to have you join me in the advanced section that follows, but I know some of you out there are going, man, this is way over my head. This is already too much, no problem. Just take your time, chord by chord, uh, learn these keys and apply your capo. And if you just stopped here, you would be learning principles and utilizing chord voicings that so many worship guitarists out there do not know about and they don't use on a week to week basis. So if that's you, take what we've already talked about, run with that and have tons of fun and add tons of value to your worship team. Well, in each of these three keys, I don't just play the voicings I showed you. Um, I, I actually have another set of chords that I use in each of these keys when I wanna be in a different position on the guitar or maybe when I want to access other voicings. And so let's start with the key of G. I love these chords when I want a modern rock sound. Great tone for that. Uh, but I have another set that I use when I want a little more of a folksy type feel. Here's my G, here's my C. And for my D, I do a couple different things, but I'll show you this one just because I love this chord. I'm gonna slide, keep my third finger here, I'm gonna slide this up to right here. It looks, it's basically taking that C position we learned earlier and just taking it up a whole step. And then my E minor, uh, if I'm playing off from these positions here, um, I'll either just play it like this. Uh, or depending if I want that darker tone, I'll just play maybe a normal E minor like that. So my G, C, D. Okay. Now you'll notice there's definitely more movement going on there, but the, the tone of these chords, it creates so many new options that I just love. And this hammer on here from the G to the C is just wonderful. Uh, 
we're coming up to this D, it's so complex. What a beautiful chord. In the key of C, uh, when I want a more driven sound, I'll use these voicings for higher energy. Um, and so we have an anchor position that's right here. So I'm gonna stretch this fourth finger down and put my first finger up here. And my bottom three strings are just gonna be this the whole time. Okay. And so my C is gonna look like this. I'm just gonna play that note and it's gonna lean over. So I'm gonna mute the top here. I'm gonna play my C note. And then I'm gonna mute the one underneath it. It's gonna sound like this. <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's a great, I love these chords. They're just so, uh, there's so much drive and energy to them. Then all we're gonna do for the F is just add this note. I love it. For the G, we're just gonna hop up here and we're gonna mute that, again, mute this note underneath the G that we're playing here. There's our G and then A minor, we're gonna come up and just like we were playing uh, this A minor seventh in the previous voicings, we're just gonna do the same thing and just keep this one here. Okay, so all together, C, F, G, A minor. I know you're gonna have fun with those. Maybe one of my favorite chords on the guitar is this F up here. Um, earlier we were, we were muting this note here and we were pulling this off, but I also love playing this F like this. And then keeping my E string open on the bottom. And then often what's really fun is hammering these on. Uh, it's just a beautiful major seventh chord. Okay, and in the key of E, uh, this one's kind of tough. Uh, there are a few ways we could go. We could use kind of that power chord position. It's not really gonna help much if you're struggling with it, but a very common way of playing your one, four, five, six is to play an E here. Uh, to play an A up here like we were doing, or just to slide your third and fourth down and play like that. Play your B like we were doing, and then just slide up to a C sharp minor. So that's very common to... and you're just keeping that shape. So if that's a shape you like, that's one way to play. You could just sliding the shape up and down, basically. Uh, another way to approach this is really playing your major chords based on this E shape up here. Um, and I'm playing it with my second, third, and fourth finger. So you have an E, the good old E major that we know and love. And what we're gonna do is come up to our A, and we're gonna keep our E and B on the bottom. We're gonna keep these notes open. Okay, and we're gonna play this A note up here. We're gonna go up a whole step to our B, same shape. Okay, so this is really nice, right? Convenient, just to our E. Now this is where it, this is where it gets a little difficult, is to play our C sharp minor, which is a whole step up. We're gonna to need to take this third and fourth finger here and move them down here. Okay, then our second finger is gonna come and grab the C sharp minor right here. And so I have my C sharp note and I'm muting the note in between then playing these two and playing these open strings. So it's. Now, those of you who've never done this is gonna take some getting used to to play this and then to play this, okay? But here's the thing, it's worth it, not only for the key of E, but if you learn these voicings and these shapes, uh, I'm gonna show you at some point in my tutorials how these apply to the key of B and oh man, do they sound amazing in the key of B. So again, you could slide this shape up and down. Uh, you could take this E major shape and slide it up and down. E, A, B, C sharp minor. Uh, another way is to kind of combine those is you're here on your E and you play an A like this. Same concept as right here, only it's just up here. I'm, I'm, same thing, I'm muting the top and playing this A open. Okay. And uh, I come up here for my B. Similar to what we just did. Um, and then my C sharp minor, I'm, I'm right there on those notes already. So that's much more convenient to grab that C sharp minor is to play the E here. The A, the B, 
C-sharp minor. So, so many amazing options in the key of E, and I would just be uh, mortified if I didn't show you one of my favorite chords to play in the key of E, and it's this A major nine down here. Uh, I only use this in the four position uh, in a song. So I, I like major nines uh, when in modern worship, uh, only in, the four, in that major chord in the four position. Um, so I'm gonna mute this E string up here, and I'm only playing these, this note and this note here, and the bottom are open, and this open A, so I got, this is a beautiful I love that um, so if, so I mentioned earlier I know some of you are squirming because you love the key of D and you're just not happy right now that I didn't give any attention to this key and I know the key of D is a it's legendary in uh, guitar world there's some great things we can do in the key of D especially when we start retuning some strings I, I just honestly I don't use the key of D a lot and if you watch a lot of worship music videos, you watch these guitarists with capos on and they're playing open chords. Do you know the three keys they're in most of the time? G, C, and E. I mean, over and over and over again. To be honest with you, when I watch these videos, I just don't see the key of D that much, not nearly as much as these other keys. But uh, when I play in the key of D, there, there are quite a few ways to approach it depending on the feel that I want. Um, but you can play a D, of course, many of us, we learned this one, maybe it was your first chord. It is D. I like to open this up and open this string here. Okay, just adds a bigger sound, it adds that more modern, airy nine in there. Um, and then for the G, the four chord, what I'm gonna do is bring my middle finger up here and it's playing this and again, muting the one underneath it. So now I have... It's like a six over nine there. Okay, so the first one, the D. And then my A, one voicing you could do off from the D to the G is an A7 sus4. It's to play like this. That's uh, a great five chord that leads you right back to the one. Um, but this voicing could be nice. Otherwise, um, a lot of times I am just playing the straight major, depending on, again, depending on what the melody's doing. So I have a D, a G, A7, seven, seven. and then this B minor seven. I'm muting up here. I'm playing this B note right here with my first finger. Uh, I'm playing the note underneath it. The open note. And then again, I'm playing these two here uh, on that D position, but I did switch those out. Um, so we have a D, G, and put a B minor, and then end with the five chord. Something like that. Well, if you stopped here, you would have plenty to work on. But if you want to get into the weeds a little more and talk about the why, the theory behind uh, what we're doing to these chords to make them sound like modern worship music, uh, hang with me and we'll cover that. So to illustrate how important it is to think in terms of key, I want to do this little thing I call the tale of three C's. So let's say this Sunday your band is playing three different songs and the first song here is in the key of G. Now in this key, the C major is in the four position. So let's say you have a C major seven voicing that you really like. This would be C, E, G, and then you'd be adding to that a B note. Uh, so a four note chord. And so you're playing in this song and you're like, wow, I just saw this great YouTube video and this guy was like, yo, play the C and it was, oh man, it's so great. And so you play the C and you love it and you love it so much, you cannot wait to use it on the next song. So song number two comes around. It's in the key of C. So the C now is not in the four position, it's in the one position. Now over here, if you play the C major seven, it's gonna have uh, some complexity. It's gonna bring a modern tone, really cool feel. But if you came here and you played a C major seven in the one chord, all of a sudden it's jazz hour at the Cappuccino Cafe. Remember, modern worship music is a style of music. 
It has its own rules for how it expresses emotion. And very rarely are you gonna see a major seven in the one position because it invokes a totally different kind of feel. If you play it here, it's not the end of the world. Uh, you may find some people like it, others don't. So let's say, okay, you know, you played it on this C major seven, you weren't insanely happy with it, not as much as the key of G, and you got a third song coming though. So then the third song begins and there it is. You see another C major chord. So you say, okay, I got one more shot here. I got one more shot to use this, my favorite voicing that I learned on that amazing YouTube channel. And so the C comes up and you play a C major seven here in this five position. And so over here, remember we said it's gonna pull it into jazz world stylistically. It's just gonna sound like it's out of place. Well, if you play a C major seven in the five position, something is gonna sound downright weird. Something is gonna sound wrong because you're playing that B note here. Well, notice in the key of F, there is no B note. Modern worship is flavoring these chords with the notes that are in the key. And so if we incorporate a note that's outside, remember there's, there's always exceptions, but if we flavor this chord with a B note, oh man, that is gonna be rough. And so now you're all bummed because it sounded so good in the first song. It was questionable in the second, and now it just sounds downright wrong in the third. What is going on? Well, this is why knowing the principle of the key is so, so important. And so some quick rules about how modern worship flavors its chords. Let's use the key of G up here as an example. Often, this is a great rule of thumb, make your minors in the two, three, and six position, make your minors minor sevenths. If you wanna sound more like modern worship music, that seven is gonna soften that really dark, uh, edgy minor chord there. Do they always incorporate the seven? No, but often, a lot of times, especially over here in this uh, six and the two position. In the one position, I often uh, make this a power position. Uh, so I'm stripping the third out of it and making this a power shape. Uh, the four position, I think this is one of the best ways right here. If you can learn how to modify your four position with the seven, the nine, or both, you're gonna have some great options to add flavor and complexity and beauty to your song. Uh, the D often becomes a sus four. That's probably the most popular option here off the D. And this diminished chord Often you're gonna see this written as an F sharp, minor seven, flat fifth, or something like that, half diminished or whatever. Um, if you listen to Charity Gale's I Speak Jesus, um, as they, they kind of go back over the chorus over and over again, there's a spot when, um, in the chorus when they use a gospel turnaround, and it's really great. It's a perfect example of how we would use a diminished chord in uh, a song like that. But otherwise, you're really just dealing with three majors in the one, four, and five position, and three minors in the two, three, and six position. And don't get scared by these extra numbers, by the susses and sevens. It looks complex, but it's going to make your job easier. And it's gonna make you sound so much better, so much closer to worship style music. And so I can't stress to you enough, don't just learn random chords. Learn chord families, chord groups, positions, one, four, five, six combinations that are styled to work together, that are efficient to play, that don't have you moving your hands super fast all the way up and down the neck. There's no reason for that. No, we don't wanna play random chords. We wanna play keys. Well, you made it through our lightning fast course on uh, the 12 chords that I think every worship guitarist should know. Um, I hope you learned a lot. I hope that uh, you turn around and you're able to use these to help your team. And I really hope that you turn around and teach someone else how to play them as well. We'll catch you next time. <laughs>